Good afternoon. I am delighted to be speaking to you today, albeit at a distance. And thank you, Namibia and UNESCO, for hosting the World Press Freedom Conference. Timothy was in his car with his girlfriend when he was blinded by the lights of a vehicle. At first, he had no idea what was going on. But when the vehicle got closer, he saw it was a digger coming straight at them. Now, after their car had been shunted 10 meters backwards, men with steel pipes began hammering on the car. Paralyzed with fear, Timothy then saw the digger driving towards them at full throttle. It tipped their car over into a ditch where it landed upside down. It sounds like a scene from a horror film, one that gives you the shivers and keeps you awake at night. Yet this is not fiction. Timothy is a Dutch press photographer who was responding to a call to capture a new story on film. He was attacked two weeks ago simply for doing his job. And while Timothy and his girlfriend survived and the perpetrators are being prosecuted, something fundamental was damaged. Our free press. The right to record, write and communicate without fear. And this is just one example, a small one at that. Unfortunately, more gruesome and fundamental attacks on press freedom are taking place all over the world. I'm talking about murder, imprisonment and impunity, continuous threats from authorities. And even as the safety of journalists is declining worldwide and online harassment against female reporters is on the rise, some politicians are harming them further with anti-media rhetoric. In this harsh reality, we must embrace positive forces, like those set in motion by the unflinching African journalists who drew up the Windhoek Declaration 30 years ago. Their historic call for media freedom has persuaded countries to adopt laws that guarantee the right to information to ensure attacks on journalists do not go unpunished, and to push for the development of diverse and independent media. Namibia itself is an example of a positive force, protecting and advancing freedom of the press. Thanks to our partnership, the Human Rights Council confirmed in July last year that freedom of expression and access to information are essential for the protection of other human rights for democracy and for a sustainable world. Last December, during the World Press Freedom Conference hosted by the Netherlands, almost 60 countries pledged to investigate and prosecute all attacks on journalists. The Netherlands also announced that it would give an extra 9 million euros to projects that enhance the safety of journalists. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot allow sticks and stones to break the bones of free speech and writing. Let's continue to join positive forces. Let's work together so that journalists can do their work without fear. Thank you. On the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the Winterk Declaration for the development of a free, independent and pluralistic press, I would like to pay a special tribute to all the dedicated and courageous African journalists who were involved in this process. 30 years ago, they met in Windhoek and initiated a declaration on press freedom, which is a landmark up to this day, and which continues to be a catalyst in encouraging press freedom, independent journalism, and media pluralism worldwide. If anything, then the COVID pandemic has proven again very clearly to all of us the significance of freedom of press and freedom of expression. Only they can guarantee access to reliable information. And without reliable information, we cannot safeguard public health, ensure accountability or uphold democracy. We simply cannot fulfill the promises of peace and sustainable development. Thus, by protecting journalism and journalists, by respecting freedom of press and expression, we are actually safeguarding our way of life and even our own physical well-being. Therefore, this must be our priority, now as well as in 10 years. Thank you. 
The 30th anniversary of the Windhoek Declaration is a historic milestone. My thanks to Namibia and UNESCO for hosting this year's celebrations. Press freedom keeps societies informed. It lets people access information to protect themselves and their communities. It allows people to recognize problems and hold governments to account. And yet journalists and media outlets face unprecedented pressures from changing business models to online harassment to violence. Digital technologies and the internet also pose significant challenges. Canada is committed to press freedom. We are taking action through the Human Rights Council, through the Freedom Online Coalition, through the Media Freedom Coalition, and more. Together, let's ensure people can enjoy all of their rights through press freedom and access to information. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the 30th anniversary of the Windhoek Declaration is a great opportunity to reaffirm our commitments to the main principles enshrined in this fundamental document. Access to the information must be universally ensured. Firstly, no journalist or other media worker must live in fear of reprisals against them. Most importantly, including danger to their liberties, health and life. Their activities must not be restricted by economic, political or any other form of pressure. Secondly, our media must be reliable. We must push back disinformation and propaganda. I am using this opportunity to assure that Lithuania stands ready to do its part in promoting safety of journalists, freedom of expression and media freedom and the right to verified information. Thank you. The Windhoek Declaration is a landmark document ensuring press freedom around the world. It calls on governments to be proactive in ensuring the protection of journalists and media organisations. And here in the UK we believe passionately in the principle of a free media. And that's why we joined together with Canada to form the Global Media Freedom Coalition, which we're proud to say now has 47 countries on board. Working together, we're championing media freedom and calling out abuses where and when we see them, most recently in Uganda, China, Belarus and Myanmar. We've mobilised our local diplomatic networks to engage with governments around the world when those abuses of media freedoms take place. We're using our G7 presidency and the Media Freedom Coalition to improve how we coordinate aid spending to support independent media where it's under threat. And we're also very proud to support the Global Media Defence Fund. Media freedom is fundamental to democracy here and around the world. We've got to keep working to protect it. Everyone should have access to the information they need to make informed decisions about their life. That's how democracy works. And it requires strong, robust and an independent media. And that's why we're determined to champion media freedom with our partners around the world, through the Global Media Freedom Coalition and through our presidency of the G7. The media is always changing and adapting. Who knows exactly what it will look like in 10 years from now. But its fundamental role in our society won't change. It will be the same as it was when the first new papers were printed in the United Kingdom some 300 years ago. Their role is to inform, to give people the ability to discuss and debate the issues of the day freely, to challenge their governments, to make decisions in full possession of the facts. That's why we've all got to defend media freedom and why here in the UK we're absolutely committed to doing so. People all over the world are entitled, as of right, to reliable, truthful information. And the people who bring us that information, the journalists and the media workers, are entitled to do their work without fear, without intimidation, without censorship. Press and media has changed dramatically in the 30 years since Windhoek, but the principles remain the same. Let's all recall them on World Press Freedom Day.